I suspect there's a few of you out there that have either bought new land this year or looking to buy or are scouting land, whether it's private or public land. And there's a concept that I'd really like you to consider for making sure you can narrow down and find that really hot whitetail and wildlife parcel um, in your search. And, and that includes public land. A really important concept is I want you to consider the perimeter of your land, the land that you're looking compared to the amount of edge within that land. For example, you know, obviously a, a mature hardwood chunk of timber, 160 acres, it's a half mile by a half mile all the way around, um, really has zero edge on the inside because it's all mature timber. Very, very low wildlife and whitetail potential on a monoculture of all hardwoods. Doesn't matter what the cash value is, that doesn't have anything to do with whitetail value. In fact, what I find is the uh, higher the cash value, the lower the wildlife and whitetail value. And you can think about that, whether it's all pine that you're harvesting, all hardwoods, pretty poor wildlife value. If it's monoculture, very bad, and that's gonna have no edge on the inside. Let's face it, whitetails and a lot of wildlife creatures are creatures of edge. They want to have that edge. Edge equals diversity, edge equals uh, diversity of cover and food. So that makes sense. Now I want you to consider a 40 acre parcel. Now this one right here is 40 acres. And I'll use this for example. It's one of our favorite hunting parcels here in Southwest Wisconsin. I love hunting here. Um, shot I, maybe six bucks over the last four years on this property. Um, very good elevation change. That to me is a type of edge. Um, going up in the bowl over here, we have benches side to side and it goes down in the draw right here. And that creates a lot of different opportunities for habitat diversity. And up here we have more hardwoods and pine and spruce, spotted junk timber, some points with rocks. So love all that stuff. There's a lot, a lot of edge, a lot of change in, in habitat. Out here we have idle fallow fields with switchgrass strips, food plots. Behind me I have a draw filled with box elder. And no one thinks box elder is a great habitat tree, but it's not a great timber tree, but boy, it's a great wildlife tree. You can see how some of these are growing into the ground. If I were to cut these, they would regenerate prolifically out throughout the summertime. Lots of shoots and high quality stems that, that whitetails love to nibble on all fall and winter. It's a really high quality browse species. Yeah, you might have some people tell you to come, cut them down on your property, but that's, that's in the face of timber and, and timber production. But if you want wildlife production, these box elders are great. These box elders extend down this draw. And by the time you add it all up here, we have points with rock outcroppings and red cedar and spruce. We have interior hardwoods here with a mix of pine, big spruce, junk hardwood, popple. Then we have these fields. They have switchgrass, benches, and points within them. These draws that carry box elder. And then we, of course we have our food plots out in these fields. And if you add up all that edge compared to the outside linear amount of feet around this parcel, there is several times more edge on the interior of this parcel than the actual outside measurements of this parcel. You can apply that same concept to public land if you're scouting. I want, if I'm, if I'm down in Southern Ohio, or if I'm in Northern Michigan and I'm looking for a spot to, to hunt, if I'm in Pennsylvania, I know of a lot of areas that have clear cuts within those, and then they have hemlock bottoms or cedar bottoms, hardwood ridges, and you start to look at those, and if you think back and in those public land parcels, the public land areas, and this extends all over um, anywhere you hunt whitetails, the public land tracks that have the most diversity, whether man-made or not, in the face of clear cuts or plantings, will have the most wildlife diversity, and of course, the, to me, the best potential for whitetails. You can apply that to small private chunks, large private chunks, large chunks of public land, but where you see more edge, more diversity compared to and relative to the amount of the exterior um, measurements of that parcel, whatever the size, then you're gonna find a wildlife bonanza and that of course includes whitetails. So look for edge. It's obvious to say look for diversity, but I want you to think that in relation to the size of the parcel you're looking at, the measurements around that parcel, the amount of edge within that parcel should be several times more and when you find that combination, you're gonna find a great place for not only whitetails, but all wildlife. And that's greatly enjoyable for us as hunters. I love sitting in the stand and seeing turkeys, grouse, and squirrels, and rabbits, and all the species of wildlife that go by. And of course, that attracts the predator birds, the owls, and hawks, and um, it's a great combination. It's a lot of fun. Look for edge based on the, uh, 
the measurements of that outside parcel and you'll find a great place to hunt whitetails, manage whitetails, create a great herd and have a lot of fun with your family and friends.